each role that we need filled in this movement, no matter how large or how small of a job it is, is critical to the rebuilding of our community and the casting of God's overall vision to this city. So we've broken down every area of our transformation strategy and our daily operation on a street level in this, in this city into bite-sized little pieces that anyone in this room can pick up and make their individual calling in this mission. At each table around the room, we're uh, looking for volunteers to just help out in that particular area and help this overall movement by filling a specific need large or small, to get this thing moving. We're on phase two now. Phase one was the casting of, of church reimagined to a community, church the way God intended it to look. Phase two is now the sustainment of those people and the movement of our people through the city to radically transform it. <clears throat> this is what phase two looks like. Nothing crazy. I'm not talking about uh, having people running around ragged by the volunteer, you know, whatever they volunteer for, or getting burned out uh, in serving but just small parts on the wall as we all stand side by side and restore our community. And if this is your first time at Forward, first of all, if you're like new here, and you're, or you're still testing the water, still dipping your toe to see if, if this is for real or, or what our deal is, don't feel like we're saying, hey, nice to meet you, now hand out food with us. Or <laughs> like we're not asking people to just come in and go do your thing. But if you're a part of this family and you know who you are, <clears throat> and you're down for the rebuilding of this city and the rebuilding of this community we love, then I expect each and every person in this room to just sign up to serve in some small part of the overall transformation strategy of Cleveland, Ohio, and Slavic Village. As a matter of fact, I encourage you to sign up for all of the ministries uh, that you're even remotely interested in, and we'll shake out where, you, where we fit best into that. You know what I'm saying? And feel free to ask questions. There's a forward leader at every table. Feel free to ask questions to fully understand what that part of the mission is and what the expectations are for that facet of the mission. And so let me run through a few of the areas where, where we're talking about here. Uh, ministries that could be your tool on that wall to help in this restoration and this rebuilding of this city. First of all, uh, Sunday hospitality team. Every Sunday, because we're a family, you know, we eat a meal together, we hang out, we, we, we keep it real. <laughs> we just live real life together all day, every day. Rather than put on our church hat or, or, or shine ourselves up to act one way on Sunday, we live this out as a family. And so on Sundays, it's important that we do things like serve a meal, that we eat together, that we hang out. We need a team of people to, that we can trust in to be part of that team. Very small thing to, to come here to help with the serving of food. Uh, the cleanup after the food's gone and things like that. Just tangible little things. There's a table for that called Sunday Hospitality Team. There's a table for the thrift store. We came here to serve. You'll never see us pass a basket in this church ever because we came to serve the community. This is not a profit scheme. <laughs> and one of the ways that we serve the community is just through tangible needs. The thrift store uh, is straight through this wall. If I could run through that wall, I'd be running straight into it. Where we give away just t uh, household goods, clothes, things like that. We need some people to volunteer and just kind of take that under their wing. Hey, you know, I'll help out in that room. And just so we have that team to go to when we need it done. Uh, the nursery, obviously with babies and stuff like that. Um, we need people to serve in that. Uh, benevolence committee. And this is uh, probably a tougher one. All during the week, we drop off uh, real needs in the community. Furniture to people who don't have furniture. A bed to someone who doesn't have a bed. Uh, food every day, all day throughout the community. We need people that I can count on as my team to say, hey, uh, I got to go drop off 14 turkeys tomorrow. You want to kick it? And we do that. You know what I'm saying? I need a team of people to do that. That's called benevolence committee. Safety security team. I don't know how many people in this room know, but Forward Church was just donated a, a beautiful building uh, and a property on that building. And so in the very near future, we will be relocating to two locations, uh, one of which is this beautiful building, and, and another, uh, uh, we're remodeling a building on 55th and Broadway. And so just so everyone knows, that involves, we need security, we need things like that, we need uh, uh, grounds managers and things like that. So, so safety, security team, usually someone diesel, I mean, if you're four foot three and a woman, don't sign up for a security team, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> just having a forward shirt, don't make you Superman. But uh, propel teens, 
Propel Teens is a ministry uh, we do in the schools where I'm in the schools once a week preaching in the public schools around Cleveland. Uh, we, the, the kids that come out of that ministry uh, that become part of this family is called Propel because we believe to move forward as a teen, we want to propel them into that direction and give them a boost to move towards that. Propel is just something we need uh, volunteers as far as just helping with after school clubs, uh, stuff like that. So if you have a passion for teens, and each one of these, think about it as I'm speaking, what is it you just naturally have a passion for? You know what I'm saying? Like what is it, any small part of, of this restoration, you know what I'm saying? Uh, onward Women's Ministry. Uh, this ministry is just starting, and honestly, they're, they're still kind of looking to see what, that, what the family looks like and need help in certain things. And, uh, and there's some awesome women involved in that ministry. So that's, that's another table. Men's ministry. Um, we have a men's fraternity running, flags, one-on-one -on -one accountability stuff. Uh, launch pad is another one. That's for four- to eight-year-old kids if you feel like that's somewhere you might want to serve. Sunday setup crew. You see, I'm, I'm like the Sunday, me and Jonathan and you know, some other people are like the Sunday setup crew. Anybody who wants to sign up for that to be a part of just setting up on Sunday, tearing down with, you know what I mean? Uh, someone that can be here um, at, a, at, a, at the time to be able to do it. Assimilation committee, and this involves handling some of the things that we do with like new members when they come here, uh, connection cards, getting all that entered into a website we have, uh, a database. Prayer team, we need a leader uh, to head up our prayer team, and then faithful volunteers to commit to praying for our family and our family members uh, to be a part of that. And so there's a prayer team table. <clears throat> media crew, my man Joe Sink over there, our media guy who's incredibly credible and awesome. Uh, as we expand and as we move uh, beyond this year, Joe's going to need some help with just camera from different angles and stuff. He's very particular about our, if you've ever been to our YouTube page, you can see Dude Don't Play Games, man. So he wants, uh, he wants people to help with that, with the media team, uh, running the computer, things like that. Um, and that's a major part. So just also prison ministry. We go into the prisons and, and we share Christ in the prisons. We need help with that, stuff that pertains to that. Frank runs, that, runs our prison ministry, and so there's a table for that. Anywhere do you feel called in uh, to serve? So just prayerfully consider what is your tool in this mission? You know what I mean? Traditionally, and even in, in my life growing up, church was just a place you went to. You know what I'm saying? You just go there, you hear some inspiring word, and then you go back home. And there was that life, and then there was life for real, back at the house or at the club or whatever it was. But they were two separate things. You know what I'm saying? Forward Church is not a place where we just want to come sing some songs, get inspired, and then go live life as usual. We are here to radically transform the community. And any small part that each one of us can take, our tool, let's do it. Let's do the job that God's called us here to do. God has placed a promised land before us and a mission of restoration to get there. All we have to do is take that small step of faith and allow him to empower us to achieve mighty things in his name. A journey of 1,000 miles begins with just that one step and is achieved through successfully taking step after step as one body moving in a forward direction. Our vision, our promised land, is God's vision and nobody else's. Of a city restored and an example to set for the world to see of what happens when Jesus moves into a neighborhood and ignites a body of his people to do his work. We can see all around us right now if we keep it real, the devastation of years and years lived outside of his perfect instruction manual that he gave us. But rather than sit here and whine about it every day and gripe about what's wrong with our neighborhood, we need to see our city for what it really is today from his perspective. It is a perfect backdrop for God to show how truly awesome he is because he promises that he will use the foolish things in the eyes of the world to shame the wise, the, strong, the weak things in the world to shame the strong, what is low and despised and scoffed at and hated on in the world to bring down the way that things are, to use a community that's been called the worst neighborhood in America by CNN to paint a picture of what his people can do under his direction. The depravity in our neighborhood is opportunity to me.
I see it as opportunity because miracles are events in history or in our lives that come out of impossible circumstances. If something is not an impossible circumstance, we can't see a miracle out of it. God does medical miracles in impossible medical situations. A tumor just disappears, absolutely impossible. A person survives when it was utterly impossible for them to survive. Uh, spiritual miracles happen in our lives when we get ourselves into an impossible place in life. And God rescues us from that impossible place against all odds. But many times we don't see physical miracles because we never let ourselves get into impossible circumstances so that God can show us the miracle he wants to show us. We take back the wheel from him and do things our way so that things don't ever get bad enough or impossible enough for God to show us who he really is. But as a community... The accumulated sin and hardship of years of living outside of his instruction manual has brought us to a place where we are broken, we are depraved, we are lost, and we're in need of a savior. And so we are sent here at this very specific time to embrace that depravity and even celebrate the fact that we find ourselves in such a jacked up situation in this city because we know that now is the time and this is ground zero for the God of the impossible to show up and show us how amazing his grace really is. I can see him in heaven now rubbing his little, his holy hands, like raising crime rate, uh, widespread poverty, sexual sin running rampant, impossible circumstance, watch this. Watch what I'm about to do in that type of situation. And boom, he sends out an army of his people into this community to be the hands and feet to deliver the miracle that's about to go down in Slavic Village in Cleveland, Ohio. You give us 40 individuals who will press forward into God's word and pick up a weapon from one of these tables today, and we will turn this city upside down for the glory of God the Father. Lord, I give you thanks for everything that you're doing in this city, every person in this room, Lord. I remember being in rooms like this and feeling like I can't get down with that and I can't be a part of something like that, Lord. But I pray that your Holy Spirit is convicting hearts, Lord, and no helping them to understand and fully know that they are here for a reason. It is not happenstance that they've wandered into this family, Lord, but they are a part of the restoration of Slavic Village and of Cleveland, Ohio, Father. So I just pray, Lord, um, that you would direct us in everything that we do, that we would never take a step as a church that you don't ordain, that we would never try to come up with our own little fancy ideas, but everything will be directly from your hand, and you would guide us into the restoration this city deserves. I give you thanks and praise for all you are, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen.